This is a Stories to be Told podcast. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tracy D.W., founder and creator of Stories to be Told. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. In this podcast, I'm going to focus on a very special lady who formed half of a dynamic duo that against the odds laid the foundation which changed the face and direction of South Africa's political landscape during the country's colonial and apartheid eras. Now, I gave this podcast the title South Africa's First Lady and I know that for most people in the UK and the West, Winnie Mandela, first wife of Nelson Mandela, will be the first person who springs to people's minds. Now, there is a link, but she's not the focus of this podcast. Winnie's unwavering fortitude, tenacity and bravery with global protests during apartheid was a key factor in Nelson Mandela's release in 1990 from a 27-year prison sentence. But this podcast focuses on that same fortitude, tenacity and bravery from a lady who lived out her ideals more than a hundred years before this. I speak of the one and only Nokutela Dube. I want to take this podcast episode to focus on her life and achievements and why I believe she deserves to be viewed as a first Lady. First, let's get into some core knowledge. Nokutela Ndima was born in 1873 in a missionary station to Christian converts in Ananda, Natal, South Africa. She was a star pupil at her school and her potential was recognised at an early age when her essays were published in America due to her teacher, Ida Wilcox, being an American missionary stationed in South Africa at the time. A teacher, singer and musician, Nokutela married John Langalibaleli Dube, a writer, educationist and politician, in 1894. They travelled to New York from Britain in 1896, where they became the subject of admiration and interest in the American media. Their story was reported in the New York Tribune and Nokutela was featured in a series called Women of Note in the Los Angeles Times. While studying in Brooklyn, Nokutela had her essay published in 1898 by the Woman's Board of Missions entitled The Story of My Life. Both Mr and Mrs Dubé were influenced by the ideas of self-reliance and economic independence espoused by Booker T. Washington, a prominent African-American who was a precursor to the ideologies held by Marcus Garvey. Their experiences in America had a huge impact on their lives and on their return to South Africa, they became a force to be reckoned with. Together, they founded the Ilanga Lasse Natal, or Son of Natal, in 1903, the first African-owned newspaper. They also co-founded the Olang High School, the first educational institution founded by African people, and the South African Native National Congress in 1912, which they governed until 1917. This organisation later became known as the ANC, the African National Congress. Although their marriage was very dynamic, it was marred by mistrust and adultery on John's part, and after leaving him briefly, the couple reconciled, but Nokutela died of kidney disease in 1917, at the age of just 44. It is often said that the best things come to you when you least expect it, and Nakutella and John are no exception. 
I came across them during my research for material for my short story about South Africa, a future publication, and a focus for a mini-documentary. What do I think is the historical significance of the Dubes, especially Nokutela? Apart from their obvious achievements, which I just stated, my perspective wants to explore a little deeper. They are a study of two remarkable people who were born into a time where their homeland was going through a major transition from pre-colonialism to colonialism. John outlived his wife and witnessed this process play out before his people. Prior to their births, their parents and grandparents would have been subject to British forces seizing the Cape Colony from the Dutch, the great trek made by the Dutch into South Africa's interior and where the Transvaal and Orange Free States were formed. Both John and Nokutela were born just after diamonds were discovered in Kimberley in 1867 and just before gold was discovered in the Transvaal in the mid-1880s. Both these events were the main causes of the First and Second Anglo-Boer Wars, 1880-81 and 1899, where the British and Dutch were embroiled in a war and dispute over the right to claim land. Due to British, and to some extent American intervention, and their teachings based on Christianity, the indigenous African population would have experienced tension and conflict between their own identity, traditions and culture being replaced with the ideology of Western modernity. For example, Western religion and education replacing and disregarding the value and status of African royal lineage. John was by right a chief of the, the Quiddy or Kiddy people and his real name was not Dube, but Nkobo, signifying chieftaincy of the Zulus, but this was lost due to John's father converting to Christianity. John's speeches as president and co-founder of the South African Native National Congress are largely unavailable and little is recorded about his role as an educator. Nakutela was, at first, laid to rest in an unmarked grave. It was a hundred years after her death that the grave was finally marked and now reads taught resilience and independence to generations of South Africans and planted the seeds of freedom. Nokutela was also awarded in 2017 South Africa's highest honour, the Order of the Golden Baobab. On a less positive note, both John and Nokutela were also examples of how the achievements of Africans are so often forgotten about and disregarded. As a person of African descent myself, I think it's important to recognise our own responsibility in always maintaining an active role to work together cohesively as a people in preserving and acknowledging our achievements, and not always assuming that we can hold others to account for erasing them. What was also significant about the Dubes is how, like many Africans before them, they embodied courage to follow their convictions by having a revolutionary spirit in setting up the South African Native National Congress to defend the rights and way of life of their people, even if the influence of Western modernity was a key part of that ideology. It is important to recognise also that South Africans and Africans as a whole are not one homogenous group of people. As well as different values, customs and languages, they also had different ideologies about freedom and liberation and approaches on how to go about this. It was for this reason that the Dubes lost control of the South African Native National Congress in 1917 as it became more and more radicalised until it finally became the ANC in the 1940s, attracting a young 26-year-old who went by the name of Nelson Mandela. 
Nokutela also challenged stereotypes regarding African women and in the West she was described as a figure of beauty to be admired. The Los Angeles Times in 1898 described her as young with blazing eyes, smooth brown skin and handsome with regular features. She speaks good English with a deliberation that is charming and in the softest voice in the world. Her manner is grace itself. This may have been an exception rather than the norm. However, she pushed boundaries and in the eyes of the West, the African woman was humanised. She also challenged women's roles in society and faced gender discrimination. The African National Congress disallowed women to join in full membership, but Nokutela was a founding member and the values and skills taught through her school was exclusively for African women that made her a significant role model for women. From my perspective, Nokutela Ndima Dube should be celebrated and commemorated for the fact that she gave birth and was the first in so many different ways. She should take pride and comfort in her legacy from which all native South Africans benefit to this very day. Now, before I close, I just want to leave you, as I often do, with a couple of questions to think about and to discuss and to encourage you on your own learning journey. How does it feel or how might it have felt to have your identity, culture and way of life compromised due to the invasion of a foreign power? In what ways... Have the people of modern day South Africa commemorated the legacy of the Dubes? In what ways do Africans preserve their national identity today? And what can the diaspora learn from this? Do we, as a people of African and Caribbean origin and descent, take enough responsibility and accountability for preserving our past? If you like this podcast, then you can listen to my other podcasts such as H.M. Windrush, A Different Perspective, Constantinople 1453, A Catalyst for European Change. Have a listen to the stories so far, parts one and two, where I share anecdotes and a reading from each of my current published titles. These and all other episodes are available to listen to on our website and on all podcast platforms. Subscribe and join our mailing list and you'll receive a free sample of each of the current four titles. The time of release of this episode, we anticipate the end of a lockdown period. As we step out into a new norm, may you stay safe, happy and in good health. Once again, it's been a pleasure and privilege to share my learning journey with you in this podcast and I encourage you to either begin or continue your own. History is a matter of fact or perspective. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you on the next page.